Cybersecurity is advancing at the speed of AI, with automation revolutionizing digital protection. Companies are now racing to stay one step ahead of cyber threats. The winners and losers of the market moving forward could be determined by who's future-proofing their cybersecurity systems. Lots of development in cybersecurity, but these are the three biggest changes in the space. First, we have automated cybersecurity. Companies can now use AI to quickly detect and respond to hacks. Microsoft just launched Security Copilot. That's an AI-powered cybersecurity assistant. But humans still have to use the technology correctly and prompt it for responses. So the next development, autonomous security systems that can make decisions without human help and therefore respond to attacks even if humans aren't available. As AI gets better, it'll also improve at predicting threats before they happen, again, without any human input. And this could save money for companies, especially as they struggle to source cybersecurity talent amongst us humans. Speaking of us, the password that we think of now is going to be a relic of the past. In the future, AI-powered biometric authentication will be the norm, meaning you'll take a selfie or scan your thumb instead of typing in a password. And this is part of what's called zero-trust policies and the widespread adoption of that. It means what it sounds like here. Even if you're an employee, the company's not going to trust you, meaning even Mark Zuckerberg will need to go through several forms of verification before he can access Meta's network. Work. Now, let's talk about regulation. As of September, the Securities and Exchange Commission requires public companies to do three things. One, perform cybersecurity risk management programs. Two, to publicly disclose their processes for assessing cyber threats. And three, publicly disclose any data breaches or attacks. Now, that last one could have a huge effect on the stock price of any impacted company. And the assumption here, the next big cyber regulation from the SEC will come for registered investors investment advisors. There's already a proposal in place to require all market entities to review and assess their cybersecurity protections. And this means professional investors would also have legally mandated cybersecurity requirements. So what can consumers and investors be preparing for in terms of what's next for cybersecurity? Joining us to discuss is Fatima Bulani, co-head of U.S. Software Equity Research at Citi. We also have Shailesh Rao. He's the president of Cortex. That's the cybersecurity arm of Palo Alto Networks. Thank you both so much for joining us. We really appreciate it. Shailesh, I'm going to start with you because you're leading this cybersecurity arm at one of the biggest cyber firms in the world. Talk to me about what's next for you all. What is the next big innovation that your team is coming up with to meet cybersecurity? concerns. Thank you, Madison. Good afternoon. Great to, great to be here. Um, look, we are seeing a huge increase in cyber criminals taking advantage of the latest technologies that are out there, the same technologies that are available to us and available to every other company out there, whether it's AI or machine learning. And they're taking advantage of these technologies to try to you know, breach and, and hack into companies and, and ransom them, et cetera. So, our focus as a leading cybersecurity vendor is to make sure that we take advantage of these technologies and we always stay ahead of the curve. As long as we're ahead of the attackers, we have an advantage and we can protect companies and governments worldwide. And that's been our focus. And Fatima, I know your focus is in sort of sussing out which firms are most uh, well-suited to meet some of those concerns. Talk to me about the public company names that you have a buy rating on right now. I know you've got a couple, talk me through some. Absolutely. So thematically within cybersecurity, you know, to peel off a lot of what Shailish was talking about, the names that we have been talking a lot about to our institutional clients are Palo Alto Networks, Fortinet, Zscaler, CrowdStrike, and CyberArk, which is a sub $10 billion market cap company. Uh, you know, all of these names do have very strong tie-ins to exactly, you know, some of the themes that you uh, laid out in your opening remarks. And Fatima, staying with you here, those are your public company stock picks within the cybersecurity space. What about some wild card investments, some public companies that are impacted by the cyber world, uh, but aren't necessarily cybersecurity focused firms? It's an important question, Madison. I'm glad you asked. So while I wouldn't quite frame it as wild card, what I can share with you is there are certainly names in our coverage universe that 
I would characterize as unconventional plays on the cybersecurity uh, theme and uh, uh, assets that are exposed to all the pain points that organizations have to deal with as it relates to cybersecurity. And the names that come to mind here are Datadog, Dynatrace, and HashiCorp. Now, these, like I said, these companies are not traditionally defined as cybersecurity companies. In fact, they operate in the observability and DevOps realms. Uh, but each one of these companies has a part of their portfolio that's dedicated towards uh, tamping down blind spots for organizations, specifically as it relates to developers who are building applications and building applications very quickly. I know you've all heard of the uh, uh, the phrase, uh, break fast, uh, move fast and break things. And when you do that, you are introducing a lot more risk into the organization. And these um, three assets that I just mentioned have parts of their portfolio that help organizations really add uh, uh, or manage their exposure from an application security standpoint uh, to, to the risk that they're, they, they might be un unveiling to, uh, to um, outside attackers and bad actors. Fatima, we're going to come back to that. But Shailesh, I want to bring you back in here. Typically, when I have someone on from a company, I would ask you how you're differentiating from your competitors. But with a problem that is just so ever-changing, like cybersecurity, do your competitors in this space, even the public companies, uh, sort of become your friends here? There is, you know, there is a level of col collaboration that has to happen in the cybersecurity industry because at the end of the day, Madison, we're all dealing with the same bad actors on the other side. So to some extent, we're on the same sides of this battle. But I do believe that at the end of the day, companies that can leverage AI and machine learning, at least in this new world, are going to have an advantage. So we've been doing AI and machine learning for, for over 10 years. It's not new, even though a lot of people might think that it just became popular in November of 2022 mm -hmm. with ChatGPT. The fact is we've been using AI and machine learning. We now collect over a trillion bits of data at Palo Alto Networks every day. That means every day we determine one, we detect one and a half million brand new attacks that were not seen yesterday. I just want you to imagine the scale of that. That is a level of scale and precision that we believe nobody else can provide in the industry. And that's what we're focused on. Because at the end of the day, if we can protect companies against any known attack by looking at all the data available, and if we can reduce the mean time to detect, it's a very important metric in cybersecurity, that's the amount of time it takes to detect when there is an anomaly in your system. If I can bring that time down to seconds, the advantage that gives me in terms of taking, a, you know, taking a countermeasures against the threat actor is just immense. So our focus is to protect everything we know of and reduce your mean time to detection for things that are brand new. That's what we're focused on. So Fatima, I know you're familiar with Palo Alto's focus. You also cover CrowdStrike, some of these names we were talking about earlier, these public companies. Talk to me about what you would say is the single biggest factor determining uh, what you think of as a healthy firm in the cybersecurity space. When you look at those public company names that you gave us for your top picks here, what is that biggest factor that you look at for them? Madison, our stock selection framework as it relates to these very important themes in cybersecurity is grounded on three very key principles. Number one, we like names that have a dominant market leading position in their large core markets. Number two, we like companies who can draft off of their market leading position in their core market into adjacencies. And number three, we like companies that are able to do all of that, which is a lot, uh, profitably. So we look for profitability, we look for free cash flow generation. And uh, that essentially is, is sort of the, the construct we use when we think about stocks. Uh, but at a thematic level, you know what makes a lot of these assets that I, I talked about very exciting it's uh, the, the bigger picture themes around how uh, complex organizations are with respect to their IT environment. By the way, how much more complex 
they are going to get with respect to how distributed the workforces are these days and, and with respect to remote work, how distributed the entire IT organization is, whether you have data centers, whether you have cloud, uh, and whether you have folks like developers who are building brand new applications and not necessarily going through IT. So I think to Shailesh's point, um, you know, mean, reducing mean time to rem remediation and detection is great. Uh, and you absolutely need tools to do that quickly because you have an attack surface for an organization that's growing so large. And so a lot of that, uh, the, the stock picks that we have and the and, um, stocks that we're very bullish on tend to have a wide enough portfolio to be able to address a lot of those pain points by way of a multi-product portfolio. That quick detection is critical here. Shailesh, I'm curious what your thoughts are about the timeline for AI being able to fully autonomously detect those threats. If you had to put a time on it, when will we start seeing cybersecurity firms offering AI that can do all of this on its own? Well, I have wonderful news for you, Madison. We're already doing that today at Palo Alto Networks. Within the Cortex portfolio, we launched a product called XIM, which is our, our recent, most recent product. And we talked about it at our last earnings call as well. We are seeing mean time to detect go down from, in some cases, weeks down to seconds. And we're able to automate the detection of at least everything that is known almost instantly, thanks to using machine learning based on, you know, using it on infrastructure that's custom and purpose built for machine learning. So this is the state of the art. In fact, if, if companies are relying on humans to do this work, we think they're already at a significant advantage. So with things like XIM, you're able to get your detection as automatically done as is possible with the state of the art. And I'll tell you why that is important. Unit 42 from Palo Alto Networks, which mm -hmm. is our incident response and research arm, we do thousands of cases every year of companies that get breached and then they call us. Right. In the cases that we we work on, we've seen over the last two years, the average dwell time, which is the time that a threat actor or a, ha or a hacker comes in, stays into your inside your network and leaves. That has gone down from 44 days down to five and a half days. Wow. Now, you mentioned earlier about the SEC regulation requiring companies having to disclose upon a material breach. If your mean time to detect is greater than four days, you're done. That means every time something happens, you have no choice but to disclose because right, you were right. not able to detect it within four days. So that's that level of technology is already here and uh, we're very happy that we're, we're taking a leading position on that. All right, we'll have to bring you both back on to talk about that in the next six months here. Fatima Bulani with City and Shailesh Rao joining us with Cortex, part of Palo Alto. Really appreciate you both coming on. Thank you so much. Thank you very much. Wish you, wish you all a wonderful day. Bye-bye.